if we were together this Christmas Eve, I'd be asking you to choose your favorite carol, and we would sing them together as we did last year. And I know which ones you would choose because there's always those favorites. There's Joy to the World. There's Hark the Herald Angels Sing. There's O Little Town of Bethlehem. And of course, some child is always going to raise their hand and and request Jingle Bells or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but who's going to squash the joy of a child? And then there would be that one oddball who picks something like In the Bleak Midwinter. Eh, but to each their own. We'd sing those carols, and it would be a great time. But the one carol that we wouldn't sing would be Silent Night. And the reason we wouldn't sing it was because I would tell you that we were going to sing it later. And you know what we would do when we sang it later? At the very end of the service, we would dim the lights, and then the light would be taken from the Christ candle. And as we began to sing, silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, we'd begin to pass the light of Christ from candle to candle. And as the warm glow flooded the the room, and as a trickle of warm wax seeped out of the crack in your candle holder, you would experience that brightness and that calmness. It would be as if in the very singing, the joy and the peace and the hope that Christmas is all about would come to us just as we sang. It would be a silent night, a holy night, a holy moment. You see, no matter what our brokenness, no matter what the chaos of our lives going around us, no matter what is happening in the world, our troubles and our tribulations, for the moment, the words would be true. For the moment, it would be a silent night, a holy night. Glory stream from heaven above. Heavenly hosts sing Alleluia. And we'd hear the angels and we'd experience the glory of Christ. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. And even though we do it every single year, still it would have that that life-changing moment. It would still be a time when more tears are shed, more broken hearts are mended, more hope is, is instilled in us than any other one moment in worship throughout the entire year. As we sing that song, we experience Christ and Christmas itself. It's as if in singing, we sing it into being. And it truly is a silent night, holy night. No matter the brokenness of our world. In fact, the song itself was born out of brokenness. Not a a general brokenness, but a broken organ. At St. Nicholas Church in Obendorf, Austria. Kind of appropriate, isn't it? That Silent Night was born in St. Nicholas Church. It was written by a young priest there, Father Joseph Moore. Again, appropriate that that Joseph wrote Silent Night. He had written the poem earlier, but in that year, in 1818, with the organ on the fritz, he took a poem, Stille Nacht, Silent Night in German. He took that poem to to an organist friend of his to seek some music to go along with it. He brought it just on on Christmas Eve. And the music that he wanted was music for a guitar to accompany the choir as they sang the song. That organist slash pianist, which I guess uh, Craig Wozner is not the only one in the world, although they don't come around that often. He sat down and he, he wrote that song. Franz Gruber wrote a song that could be sung at the Midnight Mass. And 
because it was a hurried composition, because it was a, a guitar song written by an organist, because even the, the organ repair person was there in church that day, it's believed that it was the organ that was, uh, that was broken. But out of that brokenness, out of that trouble, out of the scramble to put together a Christmas Eve service, we got Silent Night, Holy Night. And that organ repair person liked the song, and according to Gruber, he asked for a copy of the music. And from there, the music spread across the world, and soon it was translated from the German into French and into English and into many other languages. And it became, across the world, one of the most popular Christmas carols. Christians everywhere were using it to bring the very peace and healing and joy that Christmas is all about. Creating a silent night, holy night, for a celebration of Christ's birth. But once again, the world was broken. In that time, just a hundred years after it was written, the world was at war. The First World War in 1914. It was an awful trench kind of warfare where the two sides dug into to mud-filled trenches within shouting distance of one another. And there in the cold, freezing mud, hunkered down to avoid gunshots, the two sides yearned for their families, yearned for the world to go back to normal, for there to be peace. While in between them was a horrible no man's land, filled with death and destruction. But as Christmas Eve fell that first year of the war, men who had been trying to kill each other just hours earlier put down their weapons. And they began to, they began to reach out to one another. That front line was 475 miles. There were, there were miles and miles of trenches, so it wasn't something that, that everybody did simultaneously. But here and there, across the battlefront, there were signs of, of Christ's hope breaking in. In several places, the, the Germans put candles on, on Christmas trees and they raised them up above the trenches. And they began to sing carols. One account has it that the famous uh, German opera singer uh, at the time, uh, Walter Kitschoff, started the singing. Singing Silent Night or Stille Nacht. And the British soldiers on the other side of No Man's Land they picked up the tune and they began to sing Silent Night, Holy Night. Our own Minnesota opera uh, created a, an opera based on this, remembering this event. It's called Silent Night. Maybe you saw it a number of years ago. But as they sang, they began to be changed. And soon there were shouts of Merry Christmas across the no man's land. And then surprisingly a soldier came up out of the trench and began to advance towards the enemy, advancing this time not with guns and with poison gas, but advancing with food and drink. And people from both sides came up and they sang carols, and they cel celebrated Christmas that night in that awful place. They sang Silent Night. There's even a count of a, of a soccer game that broke out between the two sides. 
right there in the midst of that devastation. Now the war would go on for another four years after that. And there was never quite a Christmas Eve like that. But for one night, they sang Christmas hope and peace into being. Silent night. Holy night. Well, that war also had uh, a devastating consequence. One that you've probably heard about recently. Because the war moved around millions of men and materials and it spread around a virus and it created the, the terrible deadly flu pandemic of 1918 to 1920. Now, it doesn't take a war anymore to move around millions of people and materials. We do it every day here in 2020. And so we've got our own pandemic. We've got our own viruses being spread, and, and we're hunkering down, maybe not in trenches, but in our homes. And we're yearning to be together with loved ones just as those soldiers did. And we desperately want the world to be at peace to be calm and bright once again. We need healing in our broken world just as they did back then. But you know, the great thing about Christmas is, is it doesn't depend on our circumstances. We don't need a perfect setting. We don't need to get everyone together. We don't need to have all of our plans come together. We don't need all to be calm and bright outside. In spite of the weather, in spite of the circumstances, in spite of our disappointments, Christmas comes. We don't need it. And we didn't need it in 1914 when the soldiers sang in the midst of the war. We didn't need it in 1818 when they sang even though the organ broke. And we didn't need it that first Christmas when angels sang to shepherds pulling the graveyard shift out in the field and a young couple searched desperately for a place to have the baby and the baby had no place to be laid except in a feed trough still we didn't need we didn't need it to be perfect. We didn't need perfect circumstances because things don't have to be wonderful to have a wonderful Christmas. Because from the very beginning, Jesus entered into a broken world to those who are hurting, to those who are stuck in terrible situations and those just ordinary people just trying to struggle through and make it to another day. Jesus came to a world of less than perfection and yet still he came. And so whether it's to a poor couple in Bethlehem trying to find a place to, to have their child or whether it be a, a priest trying to figure out some way to have a Christmas Eve service, whether it be soldiers in the midst of a war or you in whatever situation you're facing this year, whatever it is, Jesus comes. Jesus comes. And, and in singing it, you know it's true. In singing it, in the very singing of it, it becomes calm. It becomes bright. Because Jesus comes. Because Jesus comes. To us. To us. Silent night, holy night. Son of God loves pure light. Radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord at thy birth. Jesus, Lord at thy birth. Let us pray. Jesus, come to us once again. 
Come to us as we sing. Come to us as we hunker down in our homes. Or even if we're not in our home and are somewhere far away. Yearning for peace and and family. Lord, come. Come to us. Abide with us. Touch our hearts this Christmas. As you've touched people Christmas after Christmas. Touch our hearts. May all be calm. And all be bright. Because of you. Amen.